Welcome to the one o'clock call. I've gone ahead and muted everyone. Everyone that's on the call should be muted right now. So uh, if you can, just a, a couple of, of norms while we're, we've got so many participants on this call. Um, I've got Mary Dandridge um, and a few other folks from the substitute office. They will be monitoring the chat box. Uh, please type your questions in that chat box and we will stop periodically and, and try to address those. Um, I know, let's start by saying that um, I know that there are a lot of questions. I know, that there is, I know that there is a lot of confusion, um, but we will work through that. Um, the, the, the process continues to evolve on a daily basis. Uh, as you well know, uh, we've all kind of been waiting to see how this works. And so uh, what we're trying to accomplish today is just to make sure that we're all, essentially that we're all calibrated on where we are to date, okay? I know that there's a lot of questions um, in regards to what this might look like. And um, I will not be able to tell you to a, uh, to, uh, in a 100% fashion what this looks like. Um, we are preparing for whatever it is that we need to do at a campus, uh, whether that be virtually or otherwise. So my name is John West. I am the Senior Director of HR and I oversee um, the substitute program as well as support services throughout the district. Um, I've got Mary Dandridge on this call. I have got Kristen Hisselbeck on this call and Amber Copeland all from the substitute office. And uh, they will be monitoring that chat. And, and like I said, um, they will uh, will answer those as we go through. <clears throat> All right. With that being said, uh, I am going to share my screen just for a moment and walk you through some of the communication that is available for you, uh, making sure that you all know where to get the information that you need. Uh, there are, uh, again, it's really key that we stay informed. Um, we will be sending out communication to your district email, as many of you have, have gotten. I know that some of you are not quite sure how to access that district email. Uh, we need to get you in, in, in touch with the help desk, get you in touch with the help desk and get that situated for you, um, because that is going to be the means that we communicate out. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to start sharing my screen, make sure that everyone can see the screen that I have. Uh, let's see. Here. John, while you're doing that, just want just a couple of housekeeping items for everybody. We've got a, yep. we got a lot of participants today, so if everybody could please make sure you're muted your um, computer, um, so that um, we're not getting background noise. Um, so it's in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can mute, um, or in the bottom um, bottom left hand corner. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Kristen. Kristen, jump in, and, and Mary, jump in at any point that I, I'm, you think I'm missing something, okay? Um, all right, so as we, uh, as we enter into this school year, um, you know that we've had a real strong push to obtain substitutes, and we are really ramping up our recruitment process. Uh, we've sent a couple of surveys out. We appreciate your participation in those surveys. Uh, we know it gets a little redundant, but uh, we are just seeking information in order for us to be able to make our decisions on a daily basis. So uh, we, we want to start with the substitute website. We have made some changes to the website in regards to this year um, and just what our commitment is to substitutes and our commitment to those that are considering becoming a substitute teacher. Um, you know, there's some things that we changed in regards to uh, the increased pay rate that came about um, effective July 1. Um, we have postponed the requirement for the steady training uh, just for this year. Uh, for that out-of-pocket expense, we just didn't want to assume um, what any particular uh, individual circumstances were during this time. And we also removed the minimum assignment requirements that we normally have per month. Uh, again, we did not want to assume 
that we understood what someone's family circumstances were. And so really all we're asking for all of you and as well as those who might consider being a sub is, is be patient, um, extend a little bit of grace and uh, work as much or as little as, as your personal circumstances will allow. Um, we certainly wanna build that trust with you through the steps that we've taken to make sure that uh, this school year is as safe uh, and um, as safe as possible for our staff and our students. So we've listed those changes here, but what's more important is gonna be up here at the, at the resources. Uh, I'm not gonna get into our current substitute resources. Those have not been updated. Uh, but uh, the COVID-19 substitute resources is where we're going to focus uh, here uh, for today. So <clears throat> you've got links to a few documents um, on the resource page. This, um, you will, the first two which you see is uh, the substitute health screening form and the substitute protocols. The protocols and the screening form are, have, have been distributed to all employees in Leander. Uh, so all employees follow these two documents. <clears throat> we modified it just slightly for, uh, for our substitute teachers, um, and we'll get into exactly what, we, we, uh, uh, what we're requiring. But this is for, this is for uh, substitutes when you report to to uh, a campus in person. So it's not for virtual, it's only when you report to a campus in person. The two forms, so you've got the, the health screening form. This form is submitted <clears throat> directly to the uh, substitute office. Um, this form is essentially saying that you understand that um, uh, you are to follow the COVID safe practices that are outlined in the form. Um, it's, it is to be submitted weekly, whatever the first day of the work week that you work. So let's say next week, you, your first day to go in is Wednesday. Well, then on Wednesday, submit this form. So that whatever day it is that you first work, submit the form, but only once a week. All right, um, this form asks you several questions. Have you recently had any contact with anyone who's tested positive, yes or no? Are you currently waiting on a COVID test that you've taken as a result of a doctor's orders, yes or no? Do you have worsening cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing? Do you currently have a fever in the past 72 hours greater than 100 degrees? And then do you have two or more of the following? Chills, shaking with chills, muscle pain, headache, sore throat. We're all pretty familiar with those, those symptoms as, as, uh, as COVID has moved through. Um, and you type in your name and your date and you submit that. It will submit to the substitute office, okay? But if you answered yes to any of the above questions, then if you've reported to work, you need to give us a call uh, because if you've, if you've worked and you may have had those symptoms, then we have to perform contact tracing within our district. So I, I, I won't get into the specifics about what we have to do on our end. It's mainly just to stress to you that once a week, this form has got to be completed, okay, for in-person uh, assignments. John, thank you for clarifying this, this is Kristen. So we had a question. Um, so even if we go to multiple campuses as a substitute within that same week, we still only need to complete the form once a week? Once a week. Okay. Yeah, because this is in general. This is not campus specific. This would be specific for the district. And so that's why it's centralized through the substitute office versus your campus. Thank you. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back to our resource list, and this is our protocols. So this is what you follow daily. You don't have to submit this at all. This is just a reference guide, okay? And so these protocols are there. These are in alignment with uh, the CDC as well, as well as state and local health authorities. 
Um, the the the, uh, the district is, has implemented these protocols district wide, and so we are all expected to follow these. Uh, I won't read these line for line, uh, but it does walk you through what the expectations are when and if you report to um, to a campus or a, um, a district building. And it discusses about grouping in, in groups of 10 or more. It talks about the expectation of wearing masks. It talks about social distancing, um, that all staff are required to wear a face covering, that we're required to wash our hands frequently, avoid sharing common objects. Um, these are very similar to all of the practices that you've probably seen on the news. Uh, some of it you may have seen when we're out in public, if you go to HEB, or maybe that's a bad example sometimes. Uh, but, you know, as far as keeping your distance, wearing a mask, um, using sanitizer, um, all, of these, all of these protocols, <clears throat> excuse me, are expected to be followed by all employees. Um, so as you sc scroll through those uh, protocols, you get to the second page, which is the employee health screening. Again, these are the similar questions that were on the health form. It's really just a reminder that every day before you report physically to a building or a campus, that you've got to make sure that you are self-screening. It is vitally important for the safety of your peers, your teachers, the campuses, your coworkers, that we are all taking the responsibility to self-screen. Two or more of those symptoms, pills, uh, repeated shaking, fatigue, uh, those uh, muscle aches, headaches, sore throat, all of those symptoms, if you have two or more, you are not to, uh, you are not to report to work and you need to call the substitute office if you have an assignment that we need to figure out how to cover, okay? All right. Any questions regarding these first two forms, whether it be the protocols or the health screening? Okay. So, John, we do just have a couple of questions about um, face coverings. So yes. could we go back to the protocols and just yes. confirm um, what the uh, approved face covering um, would be? Uh, so we, we do not get in specifics about what an approved face covering is. Uh, what we do talk about is that you're required to wear a face covering or a mask. Uh, that those are, those are things that uh, are, are required uh, by local and uh, local authorities right now. And we're, we are following that guidance uh, to make sure that you're protected and that it covers the nose and it covers the mouth, um, but it doesn't get into to a specific brand, if that's, that's a, the question. Yeah, that's the question. So the John. other thing is, is in regards to face shields. Um, so we, there, my understanding is that there will be quite a bit of um, PPE rolled out for campuses by TEA that's forthcoming along down the road. Um, but as, as far as guidance that I've come across, uh, in regards to face shields, it is the recommendation that you, if you are choosing to wear a face shield, that you still wear a mask along with that face shield until we get further guidance um, from, from TEA. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There is um, a, a a, a, an application called Headspace that we have made available to all of our substitute teachers. Some of you may have already taken advantage of Headspace. Um, it's, uh, it's downloadable to your mobile device and, <clears throat> uh, or to your laptop. And, and it's a really neat app um, and it, it's, it, it really just helps support your, your mental well-being during these uh, trying times. Uh, there's some guided exercises and sessions that are uh, in the app that really just kind of help slow your day down. Um, the, the application is completely free, but you do need to use your district um, email address to get access. Uh, so make sure that you uh, 
uh, follow those instructions on how to um, how to get that downloaded to your device. Uh, a lot of us in HR use this uh, this application, and it's really uh, you know you get tied up in the middle of the day, especially with the COVID concerns, and carry that stress with you um, throughout the day, and it, it gets overwhelming. And so some of these sessions are just one or three minutes long. Um, and just kind of allow you to, 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 to calm down just a bit and focus on the present moment and uh, try not to uh, get caught up in the chatter that's going on upstairs. Um, so we wanted to share that with you and remind, uh, remind you and, and inform you that this is available for you. And we hope you take advantage of it because it really, you know, we, we care about it. Uh, we care about our staff and we, we care about you guys and, and, and want to make sure that uh, whether you're working one day a month or uh, one day every other month that you at least are, are taking the opportunity to take care of yourself. <clears throat> Our next resources that we want to share with you, and, and most of you have probably seen uh, these resources. They're on the front of our landing page for Leander ISD, but we want to make sure and, and direct you to those as well. It's called our Launch to Learning and you will find a, um, a, a long list of content in regards to how we move forward this school year, whether you're a parent, uh, a substitute teacher, a, a, a regular staff member, a student. Um, there are many, many options, uh, lots of information to go through. We, we hope that you are taking advantage of this communication share and this information share. Uh, it's really important that we stay informed. This information is the most up-to-date information that you can find in regards to the overall district. If you weren't aware of those resources, they're just found on the front. Uh, if you go to the front web, uh, uh, the home webpage uh, for Leander ISD, you'll see them right, right there. So you'll see on that, that main banner, and you can click right here as well, this link, and it'll take you to those resources, okay? All right, um, we've got um, a, a we, we call it an infographic, but essentially what this is, is a um, you've probably seen some of these uh, sent through our district email. Uh, what we're asking, we're using this as a recruitment tool for additional substitutes. Um, we ask that if you have some, some folks in mind or maybe you, you're, you're a part of a, a community organization or a local church, um, uh, commu uh, community uh, reach, uh, community outreach, sorry, is what really what we're looking for if, uh, if we expect to, to pull some substitutes in and, and maybe answer their questions and concerns uh, during these uncertain times. That's what this is intended to do. And so um, you may know of somebody and you can, you can email them this or you can direct them to this uh, information sheet. And it just really highlights some of the steps that we've taken this school year uh, in regards to safety, in regards to the application process, uh, pay, um, and how to contact us, of course. Okay. Uh, now we're going to get to the Virtual Teaching Academy, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a moment because I think we have a lot of questions about the Virtual Teaching Academy. Um, so <clears throat> let me, before, before we dive into uh, the specifics, so what is the Virtual Teaching Academy? What it is is a set of five modules, as many of you know. Uh, that are guided instructions for all of our teachers and our substitute teachers who will be teaching in a virtual setting, okay? Um, the first three weeks of school are 100% virtual. And so whether that teacher is in their, their office at home or their living room at home or they're reporting to a campus, I can't answer that right now because there's a lot of discussion about that. What I do know is that for the first three weeks, what we are really trying to do is address all virtual instruction uh, 
by covering it with other teachers unless it's in a long-term assignment. Okay, let me repeat that. If it is a long-term assignment, right, where I've got somebody on leave or I, I have a vacancy and we are putting an individual, a certified teacher in that position, a certified substitute in that position, then that allows us the, uh, the ability to work one-on-one -on -one, um, with that particular substitute, make sure they have technology access, make sure that they've complete, completed the five modules, and make sure that they can support the classroom in a virtual setting. What we are not going to do is create the wild, wild west and open up ASOP and expect our subs to know how to pick up an assignment considering we don't, we may not know where the teacher is. Are they at home? Are they at the campus? How do I get their Google Classroom? How do I get access? All of those things create so much confusion right now. We are trying to address those absences, those daily absences by having the teachers in that area cover for them. So um, that, that should provide a little bit of relief um, for, for those of you who were super concerned about how you would be teaching virtually. Now, not saying that you won't teach virtually, I'm just saying that for now, we have to find a way to control it and funnel our substitutes through the, the VTA Academy and then create a, a vetted list of subs who are who have been trained and who have the technology access to uh, to to fill in for a teacher if and when we contact you. Does that make sense? Um, the I, I heard some uh, I heard some questions early on uh, in regards to not being able to access ASOP right now and that you would log in and you can't see anything and maybe there were some messages that you saw. Uh, the reason why is we've actually blocked every substitute in our system from being able to pick up an assignment right now uh, because that we, we saw uh, absences being picked up for August and September and we really didn't have a clear understanding of how that would work. <laughs> um, so we, we covered those absences, we made those absences where they did not require a substitute, and then we have blocked everyone until we can funnel folks through that VTA or that virtual teaching academy process. The first three weeks are, are so uncharted territory, as y'all well know. Uh, our, our main focus is to make sure that we've got all of our students uh, um, with technology access, and that we've got our teachers with the proper access and that they are comfortable with what they have to do for our students and that any vacancies or, or leave cases have been filled with long-term subs. That is our main focus. Now, we will have daily absences. People are gonna get sick, whether it's COVID related or not. Family emergencies will take place whether it's COVID related or not, no different than it has in the past. But we, we will handle those last minute daily absences in a central fashion from a campus, working very closely with the sub office. Ideally, we would like for that to be covered with, let's just use the example, let's take Mason Elementary. Mason Elementary and their second grade and they've got three second grade teachers, okay? and excuse me and one of their teachers is going to be out in a virtual setting they're going to be out for whatever reason the other two teachers who are also teaching virtually will have access to the third teacher's google classroom and her lesson plans for that day and they will simply distribute that out to their class it's that easy if the teacher's doing it if we try to plug a sub substitute teacher in that process, it becomes very, very confusing on how to make that work. Um, we may have a solution on how to make that work by mid-month or the end of the month, but for right now, we've just got to take it one day at a time 
make sure that those those absences are covered and those students have a teacher that is helping them along the way especially the little ones um, for our secondary uh, for our secondary folks uh, those students usually are are in and out of Google Classroom all day long. Um, they're a little bit easier to understand how we might pass on those um, lessons to them in a virtual setting, uh, but it would be very similar to where we would have teachers covering it or a dean of instruction, we're not sure, um, but we're working with campus principals right now to determine what plan works best for their campus, okay? Um, as we as we move through, we will continue to have communication with all of you through our through your district email to let you know any progress, any changes. And again, what we're asking for is your grace and your patience and understanding that this is super super confusing um, and 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 it does evolve and change on a daily basis. So with that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop for a moment and let's get caught up on some questions if we have any. Yeah. So, John, what, um, my recommendation is we've had a lot of questions come in about the Virtual Teaching Academy. Um, and so, and then there's been some questions about um, the virtual empowered learning job postings that are on the website for internal teachers. And so, um, just for everyone to understand, when we do report um, on September 8th, we will have virtual instruction and we will have in person instruction. And so, there will be teachers. Um, that will be applying for those virtual empowered learning positions. Um, the principals will be working that all out as to what it's going to look like, who's going to be having virtual instruction classrooms on their campus, and who's going to have in-person classrooms. And so that, that just to give you some understanding about what those virtual empowered learning teaching positions are. Um, to teach in a virtual classroom, you will need to complete the Virtual Teaching Academy. However, like I said, these first three weeks, um, we're really going to rely on the teams um, at the campuses to cover their classrooms if there are any absences. Um, some of the other questions were about um, uh, confirmation once you've completed the modules. Um, so I know that there is a, a form that you complete at the end of each of the modules, but we also are receiving that information from the professional learning office. Is that correct, John? Yes, and uh, thanks for whoever asked that question. Um, but there, we, we are pulling that list together as as each of you complete those modules and you. You do the reflection uh, tool at the end of the module. I get confirmation that you've completed a module. Right now, we've got 20 people that have completed all five modules. Um, I'm still trying to work through the best way uh, to communicate that out and to, to send a communication to you. What I, what I ask, here's where I ask for some of that grace, um, is, is as I'm working through that, um, again, I've got 20 folks that have completed it. Uh, let me get back with Kristen and Mary. We'll, we'll think of a way to, to make sure that you know that we have it on record that you've completed it, okay? Um, I, will, um, I will tell you that as you complete the virtual training, I will give you access back to ASAP. Okay, so um, is there someone here that's completed all five that you can? Uh, Richard, I have, where are you? Where are you, Richard? Okay. Claire, Vicky, Vicky have... Joiner. I see you, Vicky. Vicky, if you'll unmute real quick. I did. I did. I did. Also, I did. Okay. I did. Did it. Okay. So. Vicki, so right now you don't have access to anything in ASAP, right? When you try to log in, you don't see any any assignments. I haven't tried. Uh, I, so let me try. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I'm I'm a long term sub. So. John, this is Brian. John, <clears throat> I finished all five as well, and I've received nothing back from you. And just this morning, I checked into Frontline, 
and all I'm seeing is a bunch of stuff about my profile and where when I began subbing and stuff like that, but no access to any jobs. And I'm not trying to find a job right now, but it suggests to me that you don't understand that I've completed those modules. No, I do. I just there's only so many minutes in a day, Brian, and I, I that's why I'm asking for grace. So I, I literally just pulled that data this morning, found the 20, and we're working through those details to figure out the best way, A, to give you back your access into ASOP. We can do that manually. And B, we need to submit your time to payroll to get you compensated for the half day. So we're working through those details now. So I really appreciate the feedback because uh, I, know, I know there's a lot of questions and uncertainty in regards to that. So one of the other questions was in regards to the payment, John. Um, can uh, individuals, if they so choose, opt out of being paid for completing the modules? Yeah, I, I need to I need to speak uh, to uh, Carrie Lan in regards to that. I, I know that there were some very unique situations where we had folks that were in a different assignment and they were TRS retirees and things like that. We'll, we'll address those on an individual basis. I don't want to make a broad statement and say, yeah, you can do it and not get paid because that's, that, that's really not where we want to go. Um, Vicki? Can you think, send the number four form, reflection form, like to me and just let me finish it because I did it and it did not get come back. I went to the last gingerbread man, the person, did the reflection and then nothing came on that. That was the only one that did not work. And I did it, but I, you know, did the padlet. But either I'm doing something wrong or something got. Huh. Wrong. Because I have a note, I just don't have that confirmation. Okay. Area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, you you had something. I I just wanted to say there there have been several questions about uh, technical support with the virtual teaching academy modules and so I don't know if we have a contact person or if the help desk is assisting with this I, I'm not sure um, do we do we know that information or do we need do we need to follow up with that and, and provide that on the substitute resources page for the team yeah I think what we need to do is is put that on the substitute resource page um, I will put it underneath the COVID resources um, I will put a link to any type of uh, technical support that you might need so that's a that's a great suggestion there um, so let me let me let me just take a take a moment too to move forward just a little bit. Do we have any additional questions that are right now? Yes, this is Susan. Oh. Am I on? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, hi. Uh, I came into this just a few minutes late, and I think I might have missed something. So, if I want to get trained virtually, but not necessarily sub virtually. Do I have to do that? If I'm waiting to go back into a classroom, is that the caveat I have to train virtually before I can step into a classroom? No, and I'm so glad you asked that because I was fixing to say that. Uh, so okay. listen, if, if you have no intention or no desire to teach in a virtual setting, you do not have to complete the VTA. If, if you're, I if, want to, can it, I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. And will the assignments for virtual subbing be on the frontline site so that so we don't know yet um, okay. we, Sorry. we, we don't right. know we don't know yet uh, in a perfect scenario after the first three weeks are are virtual and so we will be working on those on a case-by-case -case basis with each campus working closely with the substitute office and if if once we move past september 8th and we have in person let's just say it stays the same and we are actually going to do in person instruction um it's going to be a little bit different at the elementary level than it is at the secondary level um and we will still i think somebody's not muted make sure you're muted please thank you okay um so after September 8th, 
when we return and we have people back at campuses. Our goal is to where substitutes will only have to focus on in-person assignments, okay? Now, um, there may be substitutes that are working virtually as well during that time, but we would work with them on an individual basis. So I guess what I'm trying to say, and Kristen, correct me if this comes out wrong, but on September 9th, if you're gonna try and pick up an assignment, you don't need to fear about if it's virtual or not. It's, it will be in person. If there's an assignment that you can see in ASOP, it's an in-person assignment. I, yes, I know, okay. And I know several people were saying, hey, I can see assignments right now, so I'm gonna have to get with Mary uh, Dandridge on that one because I didn't think that you could see anything right now. Maybe they can see it, but are not able to actually pick it up if they're inactive. So. Oh yeah, Celeste, I thought I saw your message, Celeste Myers, I don't see you, but you're out there. Will you try to pick up one of those? Try to pick up one of those assignments and see if it would even let you. Celeste is in a long-term position. Yeah, I'm oh, in a long-term. Oh yeah, yeah, you can't do it. in a long-term. Right. So the yeah, long-term long substitutes will be active. So you're already active. So yes, you are able to see assignments and you would be able to pick those up. But for everyone else, you, you should not be able to pick up any assignments. Um, gotcha, and I would guess okay. You wouldn't be able to see them. But we are working logistically to um, assign um, the teachers that are going to be virtual teachers so that they will be set up in a different way so that you will not see those assignments in ASOP. Um, and so we're, we're working behind the scenes on those logistics. But to, yep. reiterate, to reiterate what John said, the assignments that will be out there, once we start um, working after the Labor Day holiday, those will be in-person at school assignments. Yep, mm -hmm. that's correct. Um, let's see, what did uh, what did we leave off? Are we just doing questions at this point? Because I, I, I wanna make sure that, that everyone knows where the resources are, where you can find the most up-to-date information regarding the district, because I know it's easy to get, to get misinformation. Um, and, and we will be updating and putting information in those COVID resources um, to help support you, okay? And John, I have a the question. Thing. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure, again, because I came in just a few minutes late, to access all of these resources. It's on the Leander School District website? It, it's on the substitute. Uh, if you go to the departments, go to HR substitutes, you will find the resources there. I can do a quick share again, just for okay. those of you who may have joined a little bit late. And just for everyone else, we, we are recording this and we will make it available on the substitute resources page, as well as we're gonna download all of the questions from today, because I know that there's quite a few that we were not able to address, but we will have a, an FAQs that we will go through and we will provide that information also on the substitute resources page so yep. that you will be able um, to go back to that and reference that as questions arise. Yeah, so if you can see my screen, this is the landing page for Leander ISD. So you can go departments, uh, HR, substitutes, and then you, you will see the resource page right there. These are specifically related to COVID. Uh, the ones above are, are related to pre-COVID life. Uh, this is all COVID. Uh, so there's your resources there. So we will, so Virtual Training Academy right now is not linked, but maybe we can create a Google Doc uh, that you can click on there and it'll have some FAQs uh, in regards to some of the things that y'all have brought to our attention today. All right, so yeah. for, yes. One last question. So can you explain how it works for those who are looking to just virtual substitute? Yeah, so um, the, the first three weeks, as we have virtual uh, uh, instruction, 
if there is an absence, and I'll just use Mason again. Uh, so uh, at Mason, if there is a, a teacher absence, the campus is going to, to, to more than likely, uh, will use the, the, uh, the, the other teachers on that campus to cover the absence, okay? Moving past September, and, and as we have an in-person or this blended instruction that we've heard about, uh, at the secondary campuses, um, the substitute would not have to worry about virtual teaching unless they are in a long-term assignment at a secondary campus. At an elementary campus, even though they have teachers that may be teaching um, in a virtual setting, our, our goal, honestly, is to see if we can get subs to only cover the in-person. The, if, if it gets, and that's at this point, if we get to a situation where we are able to figure out a uh, efficient uh, manner that a substitute can teach a virtual classroom and I, we can eliminate any type of internet issues, technical access to Google or Seesaw or any of the other tools that campuses use, as well as having some instructional support, we will make sure and communicate that out. Right now, if I had to take every sub that we had and say, okay, well, I, we would literally have to visit with every sub to determine, do you have the laptop? Is it, you know, is it compatible? Does it have a computer? I mean, a, a, does it have a camera? Do you have the access to all these teachers, Google Class? There's so many things that we have to consider right now. It just doesn't seem very feasible for us to throw subs out and say, okay, y'all figure it out in a virtual yeah. world. So as we develop and as we get more comfortable to how we're, we are going to execute this for our students, uh, we may come up with some solutions. They may not be perfect, uh, but we may come up with some solutions to where it actually would allow some virtual instruction for subs. We wanna be prepared, which is why we have the VTA training in the first place uh, that we can't wait for us to make the decision to then start preparing uh, so we're having to prepare now for when and if that decision is made does that answer your question yes thank you okay okay thank you oh, sorry hi um this is Mutala. i have a very quick question may i ask please Absolutely. i have a very quick question thank you so much so i did a vta last week actually but I'm unable to actually figure out whether I have done all the modules or not, because I did go through everything, but in the last the modules, there are some questions like a Google questions. What did you learn from this module and what kind of support do you need from the teachers? You know, what kind of support do you need? So, after I finished those things, I couldn't find anywhere saying, okay, you are finished this module. You haven't finished this module or anything. So now I'm confused whether I have finished that module or not. Yeah, and I, 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 try, I think I tried to respond to that question earlier in the call, but um, I have not figured out exactly how I want to send confirmation out. And obviously the, the system doesn't do it automatically. At least that's what it sounds like. So as soon as I can figure out a, a, an effective way to do that, I will make sure and send out confirmation to those that have completed all five modules. So if uh, how do I know now at this point? Do I have I completed or not? Um, why don't you just email me? I mean, okay. there's only twenty. There's only twenty people right now, so twenty emails is not going to kill me. Email ID John dot West, and how do I email you? What is the email ID? Yeah, John dot West W E S T at Leander I S D dot O R G. Okay, I will do that. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, absolutely. John, what's it going to look like <clears throat> once we go back in person as subs? Are we going to be teaching virtually? For those kids that are going to be staying at home, will we yeah. be teaching the class in person and they'll be recording us for those virtual kids? Yeah, great question. Um, so Kristen and I were actually on a call earlier today with Jennifer Collins to talk about what that looks like. Because I think defining 
what those expectations are at a secondary campus or an elementary campus are super important. Um, and so let's just use a high school, for example. At a high school uh, campus, um, you may have student, you will have students in the classroom physically present, and you will have students who are at home with, uh, I would assume, a monitor or screen of some type that they are able to log into the Google Classroom and you and the teacher uh, potentially would be, um, the, or the substitute teacher would be there really just to make sure that the students um, from, a, from a classroom management standpoint are doing what they're supposed to be doing. It is our hope, and I, it is our hope that we have uh, instructions for those students, whether they are in person or remote, when a teacher is out, that they are to log into this lesson in this Google Classroom, and the teacher and the substitute would be there just to make sure that they're following those directions that were left in the Google Classroom or in Seesaw. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So it really makes sense for us to all complete this because I, you know, we're going to be using it. Yeah, Lori. I mean, I, I think because there are, because there's so many unknowns about to what extent we would use a substitute teacher in a virtual setting, we just have to be prepared. And okay. so and it's not going to hurt you from taking it unless you absolutely positively have zero interest in doing anything virtually, then by all means, you don't, you know, don't, don't, don't do it. But if, if you feel like, you know what, there, I could walk away with some knowledge. I could understand uh, how some of these, how technology actually plays uh, a larger role moving forward in our, in our students' classrooms, um, then please do so. Um, but we'll, Whether, we'll be able to apply it when we're in the classroom, right? I would, I would think so in some capacity. I, you know, I, I can't, um, I mean, you've heard Dr. Gearing say this on multiple calls, but, you know, learning and instruction as we know it is, is going to change. And it's a great opportunity for us to, to step up to the plate and be creative and be innovative thinkers and, uh, and heroic educators. And so that's our goal with all of us is that we've got to be prepared. We don't know what the future really might hold, but um, we're going to do our part now to walk away some, with some extended knowledge that we can hopefully apply in the classroom, whether that be in person or, or uh, on a virtual setting. Okay. Thank you. I have, a, I have a question. Yes. Who do you want? I'm not sure. I, I, I have a I, question. I've got so many faces. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go. Um, okay. I, just, I wanted to know, if I were to accept a long-term sub position that was supposed to start last week and it runs through the end of October, what would I as the substitute be responsible for doing before in school actually starts? So for the next three weeks? Um, yes. You, you, if, if you're in a long-term sub position, we would need to make sure that you've got all the technology access and support that you need, um, that you've got the instruction from the campus and from the, the uh, I, I would assume the teacher, unless it's a vacancy. Um, but typically Mary Dandridge is working one-on-one -on -one with those long-term assignments because whether they're driven from a vacancy or from a leave case, uh, it's usually, myself and Mary and Kristen and possibly two other of the directors over uh, elementary and secondary that are working to make sure that that campus has the right coverage. Um, so from here through September 8th, it'd be virtual. And um, I, 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 I tried to answer earlier that I'm not sure if that means you're in your home office or if you're at the campus. And, and I'm, I'm not sure about that detail. I've, I've heard a couple of different things. So really that's something that we're coordinating with the campus administrators uh, and to be, to be consistent district-wide. We don't want to have one teacher at Rouse High School sitting there. If there's no one else there, we don't need to put staff in the building for that. Uh, I think if we can stay away and, and do it from our home, then let's do that. Okay. okay. I, just, I wasn't sure if the team was going to be responsible for the first three weeks of instruction 
even right. though there would be a long term sub position in a long you know in a long term sub situation no um, you would have team support absolutely because it's going to be different um, but it's my understanding and Kristen or Mary you can correct me if I'm wrong but it's my understanding that on a long term assignment that it would be you as a substitute teacher fully responsible for that classroom. Yes, okay. that, that is correct. And just to add on to that, um, it is um, a campus decision as to whether or not they're going to want to have the long term sub physically at campus providing virtual instruction or if they are going to give you the flexibility to work from your home. But that is the campus administration's decision. So if you choose to take a long term assignment, you would need to work closely with that campus administration about where and exactly you would need to report um, and make sure that you have all of the equipment and lesson plans. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Can Olga, I Olga, I think you had a question as well. Patricia, did we I answer your question? question? Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, great. I'm sorry. Thank I you. Just have a quick, since we're talking about long term subs, I have applied myself to a Texas Teach program. I'm not sure what it means now because it probably won't be done until later. Are you guys allowed, or are we allowed to take a potential long-term during this time, or does it have to be complete? Yeah, it's my understanding um, as long as that application is on file and that it's in the proper subject area that, okay. that, that, would, that, that would apply. Is that, that's correct, right, Kristen? So, oh, I just want to clarify, um, you're enrolled in a program, um, you are taking a long-term assignment, i.e. Um, not filling in your own position, but filling in for someone who's out? Yes. Okay. So, yes, you can absolutely take those um, assignments. That's not a problem. Okay. We can certainly take it into consideration that you're in a program. But just understand that this long-term assignment will not qualify for your intern or probationary year. Um, you would actually have to be employed as a teacher of record in order to, right. to complete the requirements for your program and certification. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And then as far as the time module, um, I had some technical difficulty for virtual. What does that timing look like? How, how fast did we have to complete this? Um, there's, uh, we didn't just set a, a due date. It's not a set time. Okay. No. Um, it's hard enough to get communication out to everyone. I mean, we have, we have approximately 700 subs that we have in our system, but we really only hear from about 400 of you. And so we're, we're constantly battling, trying to keep everyone informed and stay connected. So we certainly appreciate those of you who are active and which is why we encourage that district email because that's so much easier for us to send communication out. And that's where, that's where communication comes out from our school and community relations group, our tech group. All of that is sent to your district, not your personal. So, okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I had a question about when we go back into the September 8th forward. Yes, yeah, Shelly. Um, I wanted to know, like, how is it going to be the, obviously the teachers would have to leave their laptop there and then you know we have a login as a sub you know like we have the district email and everything so how would that work as far as getting in and like because i've never had to get into google classroom you know like i've been a, the regular when it was a regular sub and stuff so sure. how is that going to look like as far as we could log in as ourselves but i've never when i log in as myself i could never get to the teacher's google classroom so that's right. got to look different yeah, and we're working through some of those logistics now and what that looks like. We had talked about today is that is that something that's communicated to the substitute as they check in each day? You know, if you if you were to get a substitute packet, if that's if that's a teacher who's got both virtual and and in-person students, or if there's certain passwords or access, <laughs> do we give that to the substitute at that point? Or is it is it something that the substitute is really there to manage the physical classroom and someone else is doing the virtual aspects of it? Right. We just, we just don't know. We don't know. And and I think it might depend on the campus as well. Um, you know, because some campuses, of course, that all depends on student population. And and right now we're we're almost split fifty fifty. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we don't know how that's going to impact each individual campus. Okay. 
Okay, I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I have a question. You bet. Can Where you are hear you? me? I can. Jeannie, okay. hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, I've been subbing for a, for a while, and that she answered. She asked us the question that I was going to ask. We don't have access to anything that the kids do. We cannot see what they're doing because some kids don't even do the work. <laughs> and I was wondering if there was a way we could get access to what they're doing. When you say access, you mean to their own work? No, like what they're doing for that day, like on their okay. Google Classroom, so, and we can't right, see right. what they're doing. Yeah, we know, um, and that is that's really just that technical uh, aspect of instruction that um, we are trying to understand and 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 evaluate on the best way to get you access. But we also have to ask the question: Do you need access? You know, what, what is the expectation moving forward? Do we expect the substitute to have access to not only the Google Classroom, but any type of lesson plans or forms or anything like that? If that is the expectation, then how are we going to get that access to them? I'm talking like role. Like, Absolutely. Attendance, and big issue. Attendance, that, yep. That was the biggest issue last year Right. Before we got on spring break. Sure. Would, and we're still working been, we're still working through those details as well. So it would have we, been a lot easier on the computer. <coughs> agreed. Understand. Absolutely. Thank you for that input. We're we're looking into it, I assure you. <laughs> Thank that's, you. That's one of those where we'll have to ask for some more grace. <laughs> Thank you. John, I have a quick question about special ed. Are we planning to do online virtual teaching even to special ed kids? Yes. Uh, resource kids. So um, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, I know that we had, um, I had, a, well, we were supposed to have a discussion with Kimberly Waltman today in regards to substitutes working with our special needs children. Um, and so we have still not uh, identified exactly what that looks like. I know that you know, when you say virtual, but you're in an inclusion, you're an inclusion IA, I'm not sure how that looks in a virtual setting. Um, that's, you know, that's my concern too, because I right. somehow am unable to picture it on how right. it's going to look. No, and, and you know, we've got some creative people that are working really hard to figure out what that, what's, how that works and how that's going to best uh, instruct and, and what's best for those, those kiddos. You know, that's what we're trying to work through. And there's just um, a lot of questions, a lot of questions. So stay tuned on that one. Uh, oh, wow. we, we expect to hear some good right. things. Thank you. I think Ardette. Hi, everyone. Um, my question is like for our SPED, I have a SPED question too for our kids that are SPED. What, are there any special, like for parents who choose to, send their kids back to school? Are there um, special precautions that are going to be taken for them? Because, you know, a lot of them don't communicate in terms of, you know, um, sanitizing more and stuff like that. Are there any things that are in place? Because I have a special needs son, and that's like a concern for me, especially for the kids that are, already have pre-existing, you know, stuff, and for parents who decide to send them in classroom rather than virtual. So I just wanted to know um, a little more about that. Because yeah. I do a lot of SPED. So. You know, I, I'm not sure, but you know what we can do is, Mary, Mary Dandridge, will you please get with, uh, with our dad and, and let's see if we can get some information. We'll post some more information on the resource page because that's, that's a great question. We know that we've had a lot of questions in regards to that. Uh, special education component and those students that have need, special needs. So, great question. Um, Vicki, I think you, Vicki Joyner, I saw you raise your hand earlier. You're muted. I put it to be the last one, Vicki, because we're going to need to wrap it up. We need to be respectful of everybody. Uh, yeah. You put it on chat, but I, I know <laughs> would ask questions about that. 
assignment, and I could go over and read it off the page. So I don't know that we can do that on virtual. That yeah, just... you're breaking up a little bit on my end, Vicky. I couldn't, I couldn't hear you. I put it on the chat. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Well, we'll All right. we will. We will update the uh, resource page for you guys. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do, uh, virtual and in person. We will, we will send out another communication in the next couple of weeks, possibly even next week for another call. Uh, just as things evolve, if it becomes too much information to communicate in an email, we'll probably just jump on a call. Um, and so please, Please uh, stay informed and then reach out if you have any questions, okay? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.